Hi guys, today we're going to have a very positive video. We are going to talk about new Severn racing sails, Mach 6 and Hyperglide 6. Hyperglide 6. The positive because I am testing those sails already for some time now. I'm very positively surprised. Uh, you know probably from my previous videos that I was uh, kind of stuck on Mach 3 because I, I'm not really that excited about Mach 4 and Mach 5 in slalom slalom sales for the fin and uh, you know I was kind of skeptical about Mach 6 but looking at the specs of the sales I already knew that changed that something changed and changed by much and the first thing that changed looking at the specs was the boom length as you know also from my previous videos boom length affects a lot the power of the sail the torque the the low end and also high wind stability in the gusts and I was really, really hoping for Mach sales to come back to the long boom design as it was in Mach 3 and Mach 2 and Mach 1 also. And it did. So here we have a brand new Mach 6 8.5, uh, which is uh, amazing sail. It's really nice. And I will briefly tell you what's changed and how it affects your performance. Uh, I'm telling this because in short, if you are able to get your hands on Mach 6 sails, go for it. These sails are amazing, very stable, good in low wind, good in high wind, easy to plane, very good for jibing, everything is there. So, the first thing that changed a lot is the boom length. It's not only the, the, the boom is longer, but also the designers came back to the low, longer second button that goes above the boom. So, actually, the effective length of the boom is much longer than the boom itself, which is nice. It gives a great stability in the gas and also very good low end. But also the mass sleeve is much wider and the profile is deeper. That gives also stability and that gives also very good low end, not sacrificing top speed. The sail itself, it's very clean. It doesn't have too many wrinkles. It's really well designed. It's really well made. And I'm very, very excited about that. One thing that changed a lot is also the sizing because previously we had 8.4, uh, uh, we had 9.4, 8, 6.7, 8.7, 2 and smaller. And now we went only to, the Severn went only to four sizes, which is 5.5, five, 6.5, five, 7.5, five, 8.5. Five. And this is kind of scary because you lose some of the sizes and you don't know what to do. In brief, the 8.5, is not like the previous 8.6. It's a much stronger sail, and actually this new Mach 6 of 8.5 is planing in light wind as good as my 9.4 Mach 5. So the sail has a lot of low end, a lot of torque, and it's really, really good for, for low wind applications. And I think, especially because of the wider sleeve and a bigger, prof deeper profile, and also you can hold it as long as the previous 8.6. So, it's possible to ride it in 25 knots. Uh, actually, the wind range of those sails went so broad and so big, I'm almost convinced that we could use 8.5 and then jump directly to 6.5, totally skipping 7.5, which uh, is a good news for someone that doesn't want to have a lot of gear. 6.5, we will see a lot on the windsurfing video clips that will be after this tech talk. This is from Egypt, where I was testing a lot high wind uh, performance of those sails, and uh, quite a lot of it is on 6.5. And 6.5 performs really well from 15 knots up to 30 knots. So it's maybe even more, 35 knots. So it's a very uh, usable wide wind range of this 6.5. And of course, if somebody wants, they can use 5.5 for, for extremely high winds. But I think 6.5 is an extremely versatile sail that holds high winds, but also it's really early planing in super light winds. So nice, very nice. All the sizes are great. I tried them all. I'm very pleased, very excited. So if you can get it, get it. That's for sure. One thing that it's still not fixed, and this is a, an issue that is ongoing for some years now, is that the lower leech is catching the foot strap. This is something that it's not pleasing me also, but I'm solving this problem by <coughs> extending the extension uh, yeah, four or, or three holes longer. So it's six or eight centimeters longer and I'm just leaving the space between the blocks. So the wholesale moves up 
and then the problem of catching is, is solved. So this is simple and, and cheap solution for this problem. I hope in the future Severn will cut the lower leech higher, so we will not, uh, it will not grab the foot strap. And now also I must say a few words about uh, the new Hyperglide 6 slalom foil sails. And finally here we have a proper foil slalom sail. This is, this is a completely new design. Also the sleeve is wider, but the profile is different. And finally in Severn, there are two distinct ways of designing sails. Sails for fin slalom, which are deep and powerful, and sails for foil slalom, which are shallow, flat, and very clean. And I, I tried those sails quite a lot also. And I must tell you that I'm super happy. These sails are perfect for uh, foil slalom. And, and finally, uh, these sails are completely flat, which is a must for foil riding because foil has um, almost no resistance. And if you have a lot of profile, it's just becoming heavy when you go fast or it's just impossible to go fast. So I must say the Hyperglide 6 is, I think, one of the best sails in the planet right now. I was trying those sails on the uh, normal SDM mast and RDM mast, and I, I also have to say that they perform equally good on both type of, types of masts. So either RDM or as, SDM works great. Uh, this 8.5 is actually rigged now on the 490 RDM, 100% carbon, and it's amazing. It's, it works super nice. Low end is great, top speed is great, uh, in the gust is great. A lot of you guys will probably ask, so what do you do with the cambers? Do you, do you change the cambers for RDM cambers? The answer is no. I'm always on the SDM cambers. I just put uh, spacers to, to adjust for the thickness of the mast and to adjust it is enough to put four thick spacers on each camber and this will compensate for the, the thickness of the mast difference. I also designed an integrated spacer, which is a thickness of four thick ones and I print it on 3D printer and I just shove it in and it works great. So uh, if you want this baby, just drop me a message on Messenger or somehow else and maybe I will get it for you. And one important note about those sails, both Max 6 and the Hyperglide 6, don't be afraid to pull a lot of downhole because these sails go really fast only when they're super well downhole. These sails are much stiffer because they're deeper. This uh, Max sails are deeper, Max 6 sails are deeper, uh, so they require a lot of downhole tension to really get this release, to get this slipperness. But once you downhole it really a lot, then the sail becomes super light and super comfortable. And the same goes for Hyperglide 6, which is uh, amazing, Feel, feels like there is no speed limit on the slalom foil. Uh, but only when it's really well downhold, there is that you need to have really loose leech to to be going fast on the foil on Hyperglide Six. And now I have to say uh, one short sentence about the previous video about the slalom fin and the waveboard. A lot of you guys are get uh, got uh, really excited about this idea. It works really well. I actually use it for a second year in a row, and I'm super happy about that. But there came a little bit of a confusion because some of you are asking if this will work on the on you know bigger waves no the idea is to get a waveboard that will be compatible with conditions on the sea like baltic sea where or like north sea or like in zilt uh, where you have a lot of chop where you have a lot of current when the way where the wave is collapsing very fast Difficult conditions. I'm not talking about the big Maui waves or Margaret River, uh, huge, smooth waves. No, this, I'm not even uh, considering this because I didn't try it. I tried it a lot on the Baltic Sea where the conditions are very difficult and very rapid and it works really great. So this is a product that, that works for these certain conditions and I really wish someday Hopefully Starboard will do a waveboard with a proper tattle box that, uh, that will be designated and dedicated to go on the conditions like Baltic Sea on shore. And one thing, because a lot of you were asking in the comments where to put the, the, the tattle box. The tattle box has to be no further than 20, 12 centimeters from the tail of the waveboard. Otherwise, the, the board will stick down. It has to be far back 
for the board to be to be released. And also some of you were, uh, were doubting if there is enough space in the board for tattle box. Of course there is. And uh, the screws from the tattle box, they are exactly in between the screws for the foot straps, so they're not obstructing. And uh, if you would use a power box, the power box screw would be exactly on the back screw of the foot strap, which is kind of in the way. So I hope this is off the table. <laughs> okay, guys. I think it's enough. Uh, I'm talking to you already from Poland, which is uh, one of the most beautiful Septembers ever. We have 30 degrees every day. Not so much wind, but luckily I just came back from Egypt where it was pounding 20, 30 knots every day. And I was very lucky to test those beautiful sails in proper conditions. So it's enough talking. Let's go surfing. <laughs>